Hi, I'm Jason Mears and this is my VMware 2020 half year update. Um, this will be an update from the video I recorded earlier in the year on all the things that have changed in the past six months. So I'll be recording a simple or a short version and then later on I'll be doing a more detailed version um, and a bit more thorough coverage of the uh, topics in hand. Um, so this is going to cover things like virtual cloud network, modern apps, intrinsic security, multi-cloud and digital workspace. So just a slight change from the, the last video recorded. Obviously, since the last video, we've had coronavirus and COVID-19 and all the conversations have changed drastically or massively in that we've gone from talking about, uh, did you know about the following VMware products and services and all the things that it can do to a conversation about how have recent events affected you and your team? What things do you need help with quickly? How can we keep your business going? Um, is there any way we can offer some you know, support or advice? So most conversations for me now revolve around um, how IT departments have, have either struggled to cope or had to put in very quick interim measures just to keep things going um, because obviously everybody is, is now working from home or working remotely. Um, and there's been a, a big rush and a big panic on, on getting people who were traditionally desk bound in an office to be able to work from home uh, properly. Um, so as I say, a big change for most people. And I found that most people are doing very technical things and just rushing around trying to get things right. And now that that initial bump is we're, we're through or we're over and most people are working at home in some sort of fashion, they're now focusing on the more strategic uh, type of things and, and planning. And that focus, uh, that renewed focus on IT is often come from the top of the business. Um, it's come from the senior managers above who are now asking, um, you know, how, how do we kind of do things better in future? How do we do some kind of disaster preparedness? And how do we make sure that we got business continuity when things like this happen? So seeing a renewed focus in actually people rushing to get things done at first, but now them stepping back and saying, how do we uh, do this more strategically and how do we plan for the future? A term that I've not heard for a long while is people talking about a target operating model, where they want to take the as is and the to, uh, as to be, and they're working out where they are now, where they want to be, and making sure that everything that's done from this point forward works towards that target operating model or that to be situation. So. Although it's been terrible for lots of IT departments um, with all the, the increased pressure that we've had going forward trying to keep things working, we have now got some more visibility up at the board level or up at senior management level and people are now talking about strategy and how we move forward rather than cost cutting and you know small tactical things that we were doing before. So when we talk to people about that, again, there's this high level strategy discussion and, and directives being pushed down from the board. But here are the other things that we talk about quite a lot. The, the biggest one by far being about digital workspace, remote sites and home working. This is the thing that everybody is throwing all their efforts into at the moment, because obviously offices are closed and people are working from home. So that's the, the core focus for everyone. Seeing lots of people doing things like um, setting up um, VPNs that were never designed for this many users, uh, people either take in corporate PCs and laptops home and trying to work through a VPN. Uh, sometimes people using home devices but are just a rush to keep people working from home. On the flip side of that, the other thing on the right hand side, modern applications, Docker and Kubernetes, the thing that I spent the vast majority of my time talking about six months ago, that seems to have really con kind of been pushed back a little bit, that, that that's almost like a nice to have now, because people just want to make the existing applications and services they got work properly for the, for the bulk of the staff or the for majority of the staff. Uh, conversations I used to have about storage and backup are now all about disaster recovery and disaster avoidance and preparedness for things like this. Um, almost people assuming that you know this might not be the last time that something like this happens and we need to be better prepared for it second time round. So not having lots of conversations about that but certainly this uh, preparedness and avoidance, uh, avoidance part is something that people want to consider when they create the next strategic model or the next round of planning. Um, you know, for IT going forward because we're very much moving from this we got through it to okay how do we do things going forward 
Um, networking uh, one and internet acceleration. Again, used to have lots of conversations about this. The focus now is is by far on one acceleration and internet acceleration because lots of people are working from home on broadband connections that they share with the rest of the family, and also that many people are using a VPN that was never designed to handle this many users. So common problems I'm seeing with VPNs is not only that they weren't sized for this many users to begin with, but they work in a model called single armed where every, every bit of traffic goes through that internet connection. Um, so whatever you're looking at, whatever you're working on, it all goes back through work. There is a type of VPN called a split tunnel where it's a bit more intelligent and it can only send things that need to go through work, uh, through work rather than everything um, you know, on um, rather than every network connection go through, so that split tunnel is working well. But lots of people again struggling with that, and I'm um, seeing a big up, uh, big level of interest in VelaCloud, which is our one acceleration uh, technology. But rather than that move from being um, a branch office or a head office type thing, people are more interested in these smaller appliances, smaller devices, about the size of a traditional router that you plug in at your home broadband end. So it's one acceleration for the users working remotely, um, but done in a way that doesn't break Netflix or any of the other online TV services that the rest of the family need or want to use. So. Um, the the Vela Cloud is definitely seeing um, an increase in interest, but more the smaller devices that people use at home rather than the bigger devices that work at head office and branch offices. Um, network security and device management. Again, I think there's a, there's a focus on um, securing things outside of the office, especially if people are using their own device. But the interesting part for me here is this device management. I, I think most organizations have decided that where they would have given somebody a desktop PC before, that's almost certainly gonna become a laptop now. And I, I think even uh, people whose job doesn't involve, involve them traveling around, they'll probably be issued with a laptop now. But I'm also seeing lots of renewed interest in things like Chromebooks, where you can provide a device with a long battery life to somebody that's able to access all of their applications and services, but not have the worry of the Windows operating system underneath. So one less thing to manage and secure. So uh, Chromebooks are definitely receiving more attention than they were doing six months ago. Um, when it comes to on-premise data centers, um, the, the bulk of the stuff I'm seeing there is that they people want to expand their on-premise data center into the cloud. So expand or stretch into public, so something we call hybrid cloud. So lots of conversations about hybrid cloud. Um, those conversations that we were having earlier in the year about a second data center that's been shut down or decommissioned or you know too old or not suitable for the purpose, it's almost like most people are looking at that second data center becoming a public cloud provider and having this hybrid cloud where there's the on-premise data center or the primary data center stays as it is, but the second one becomes a cloud provider rather than an expensive renewal or refresh of an existing one. And then on from that, people are also looking at public cloud and cloud native. Um, but I think the thing I see more than anything is hybrid cloud. Um, and a lot of the hybrid cloud I'm seeing is from people who've jumped straight from on-premise to public cloud and it didn't work exactly as they thought or they've had a terrible time doing um, migrations and replatforms. I think most of the people I speak to say they're doing public cloud because they got Office 365 and SharePoint and Exchange, but now it's come to move some actual real life applications. They're struggling. Um, I do know customers that have you know, spent two years trying to move from an on-premise to a public cloud, and they've spent two years, two million pounds and 1,800 man days, and not managed to move a single application from on-prem to public cloud. Um, and that's because they've had this you know, cloud first strategy um, that didn't really take into consideration any of the other aspects you, you need to, you know, things like um, IP address range, latency, replatforming, uh, compatibility, things like vendors who are, have gone out of business and you can no longer get support for. But what I am seeing is lots of early adopters of public cloud hitting some problems and some issues and now looking at, to, to move from a cloud first to a cloud appropriate and now looking at doing hybrid cloud rather than just public cloud. Um, the places that I am seeing public cloud being used is where people have got a hybrid cloud and they've got adjacency to public cloud services. So they want to take um, an old application that's maybe 5, 10, 15, 20 years old, but now it's running in a hybrid cloud and has adjacency to a public cloud. They can then start to use things like AI and machine learning on data that's come from a legacy application. So the, the big ones there are things 
things like sentiment analysis and natural language processing that people are using a brand new public cloud front end with an old source of data um, so that's kind of what I'm seeing more than anything but a bit of a retreat for some people from public cloud because the project hasn't gone as well as they thought it was going to so as far as corporate strategy and focus it looks much the same as our strategy has done since uh, 2013 2014 you'll recognize this from our previous videos the thing to say here is that although the strategy hasn't changed the capability has improved um, and again another core part of this that intrinsic security that intrinsic security is part of everything we do not just something added on later so i'm going to focus on uh, five parts of this so app modernization digital workspace multi-cloud and virtual cloud and intrinsic security so the first of those is modern apps that can deliver new value and capability from existing on-premise solutions um, if you'd have asked me six months ago about modern apps i would have said it was brand new applications written in brand new programming languages that did brand new things um, that hasn't kind of panned out the way i expected most people are actually trying to get value out of their existing applications and their existing data sources not just to go and create brand new ones so what i'm saying is people are moving legacy applications into a hybrid cloud model and then having adjacency with a, a public cloud so they can now do things as I said before like artificial intelligence and machine learning people are doing things like sentiment analysis and natural language processing on data they already have they're realizing that actually AI and machine learning are cool and very good at what they can do but it counts for nothing if you don't have the data so bringing the data to a public cloud provider is what I'm seeing more than people delivering new applications for the sake of new applications um, using multiple public cloud providers but being able to manage everything as a single platform with a small or a single team so as I said before lots of people that had a cloud strategy which was yes cloud first Amazon or yes cloud first Azure are now figuring out that that maybe isn't exactly what they want to do and maybe some cloud providers offer different things or different services and some might be better than others at different things or even that they're going to have to have a hybrid cloud or a multi-cloud environment and the issue for most of those people is they've they've got a small team or a single team and in some cases less staff than they had before so although the level of complexity has gone up because you're now managing multiple different platforms and environments the number of people you've got to do it is less so this simplification that hybrid cloud can bring you the things that vmware cloud foundation can give you you know a single set of consistent infrastructure and a single set of operations is becoming quite important purely because complexity has gone up and the size of teams and the ability of uh, getting people to work on this has gone down so it's a it's a simple case of trying to do more with less um, home working and remote learning part of a new disaster preparedness and resilience directive from upper management obviously this is the big thing at the moment and this is the thing that's changed the most um, I used to have conversations with IT departments about remote learning and remote access um, and it was very much seen as a as a nice to have or a kind of a something you add on top uh, now this is being treated as almost like a a given or a starting point that actually this isn't a luxury this is a better way of working and now that people have been working from home for three months and people have realized that they can still do the job people are asking questions about do we still need people to come in do we still need all these buildings do we still need all this equipment do we still need to be struggling for parking spaces and public transport and then the environmental impact of that so what i'm seeing is a definite push on remote learning remote working and disaster preparedness but it's now the senior people in the business that are asking for it rather than the IT department putting it forward as an option it becomes almost like a, a requirement for doing business in future and I also see that people seem to be thinking that this is not going to be the last time we have something like this or the last pandemic we ever have so now is the time to look at disaster preparedness and resilience because businesses can be forgiven for kind of um missing this once but if it happens again and businesses aren't ready that would be you know unforgivable uh, proactive security considered and enforced at all stages this is just one of those other things where it's becoming a, a requirement rather than just a name check or a tick box you know you can't just ask people if they're doing things securely there's now governance uh, and compliance involved in this and 
Although people have been generally pretty good at doing security before, one of the issues people are finding is that if you're rock solid and super tight on security, but the only way you can prove that is to show somebody a 10,000 line Cisco config for a firewall, most people just cannot consume or absorb 10,000 lines of code, never mind understand what it does. So actually moving to a policy-based approach or uh, for security and a policy based approach for compliance means you can clearly see what the policy is intending to do and whether that policy is being adhered to or not so whether that's a security policy that's human readable or whether it's a, a standard set of governance or an already predefined standard maybe like PCI DSS or HIPAA or any of those things it's much easier to prove compliance if you're using a policy than if you're using a firewall configuration or a you know text configuration so there's a focus definitely on moving to not only doing security and compliance and governance, but being able to show it and policies are definitely the easiest way of doing that. And then the other thing we're seeing is a network that can span public clouds as well as delivering microservices and containers. Again, I thought this was all going to be about microservices and containers six months ago, but that's kind of less of a focus. The new stuff is having to back off a little bit as we just worry about business continuity. And this network that can span public clouds um, is not only a way of doing hybrid cloud and public cloud, but people are viewing that even if they've got a, a preferred cloud supplier, cloud supplier and that's the supplier that they want to use for everything it doesn't do them any harm to have an environment that could be moved to another supplier at a couple of days notice or a couple of weeks notice because that supplier knowing that they can only use their cloud rather than a competitor's um just puts them in a position where they just feel like there's too much locking and too much um you know power in the hands of the cloud provider um, I'm working with some organizations that have standardized on one public cloud uh, or one type of public cloud service and are now finding that they've they've had a 40% increase year on year for that service and they feel that that's deliberate because the supplier knows that that's the only place that they can buy it from. So people who have decided that they're going to standardize on one cloud doing it in a way that allows them some flexibility or some ability to move just so that they can keep the suppliers honest when it comes to price increases so again network that can span clouds also can do microservice containers but it tends to be this ability to move things around and not get stuck in a single supplier contract so when it comes to app modernization everything we do would fall under the banner of tanzu when it comes to multi-cloud, we would call that VMware Cloud. When it comes to digital workspace, we would call that Workspace ONE. When it comes to intrinsic security, we would have NSX, but probably more realistically, that's a carbon black type conversation. And when it comes to virtual cloud network, that would be NSX and to some some degree, maybe Vela Cloud as well. So they're the kind of things I'm talking to people about at the moment. Uh, and uh, as, as discussed, the reasons how those conversations have changed. Going forward, uh, and in a subsequent video, I'll talk more about these other things. So I'm not going to do it in this video. I will record a, a subsequent video, which will go into more detail on these. But these are all the things that fall in that app modernization, multi-cloud, virtual cloud network, digital workspace, and intrinsic security play. Uh, and what I would say is, again, th things that have massively changed is when I have conversations with customers, it's very much about how can we help you? What can we do? How can we get you through this spot? Um, and most of the conversations I now have end up with me referring a customer or passing on some details and getting a somebody who can help them, somebody from the specialist team, so somebody that can help them with storage and availability, network and security, cloud and cloud management, end user computing or modern applications. And it's very much just about doing whatever we can to help a customer to get through this. And some of the ways that we're doing that is with things like experience days, which are obviously all virtual now, uh, breakfast briefings and lunch briefings. Um, there's another focus on online events and videos just because people are finding it difficult to find the time. Um, I should mention there that VMware Education have made a whole host of videos and training plans completely free for the next six months. So if you just go to uh, Education um, on the VMware website, sign up for a free account, you can have six months worth of free training on any of those things. Um, the other things we've been asked to do is help IT departments uh, with facts and figures and reporting back up to senior management. So senior management would like something like an environment assessment to see what they've got now. They'd like some kind of cost modeling and business cases looking at and doing because, uh, because upper management have decided they want to move to this target operating model. It's become now more strategic. 
and rather than actually dealing direct with IT departments and IT staff as a you know customer and a supplier or a customer and a vendor, we're almost working together with them so that they can supply this information to upper management so that upper management can, can come up with a response or a new corporate strategy for dealing with troubled times like we're in now. So that's how my job has changed in the past six months and how conversations I'm having with customers have changed. I wanted this to be a realistic view of, of kind of, you know, how things have changed rather than just, you know, product placement or pitching. I've not talked about any, uh, you know, specific features. It's just more about how, you know, the the, uh, the situation is changing on a day by day basis. Um, and then it always ends up with, you know, thank you and thank you for your time and any more questions. Um there's probably more questions now about things we've never been asked about before because um, it's not just a you know here's a product here's a feature would you like it there are actual real serious tangible problems that people are trying to deal with and they're just trying to gather information on what their options are and how things work so um, again difficult times but for IT departments as a whole I think IT departments have now got much more visibility than we ever had before and the business values all the stuff that we did much more before and it's going to be an intrinsic part of the business Business, not just an overhead or a cost center. So thank you very much for your time and I hope you found that useful.